Polycast versus PLA. Which one's better? Let's find out. Now I emailed Polymaker and asked them if they'd like to sponsor a video by sending me a roll of this stuff. They didn't even respond. You are a peasant. So this is going to be a brutally honest review. Now this isn't a 3D printing channel, so what I'm primarily going to be reviewing is the casting qualities when everything's said and done. That being said, there are some notable differences about this filament versus PLA that I should mention. Now the first thing to note is the size of the roll. Polycast roll is a lot thinner, and this roll costs 50 bucks. 50 bucks? The polycast roll has 0.75 kilograms, whereas the standard PLA roll has a full kilogram. And I can get a roll of Overture Black, which burns out pretty well, for 20 bucks. That being said, if the castings are way better, it might be worth it. Now this type of filament is known as a PVB type filament, and I don't really know what that is, but the manufacturers say it's very sensitive to picking up moisture. That means water can absorb into the filament, so I bought this filament dryer to help with that problem. This EBOS dryer will help dry the filament as it prints. And I'll post a link to it below if you're interested. So after a few test towers, I realized this filament is more finicky than PLA. But it looks like about 205 degrees gives the best results for temperature. Still not super great, but we're going to go with that. I'd describe this filament as being maybe a little more sticky than PLA. And while I'm no 3D printing master, I did get the settings dialed in good enough to get started. Now to test this out, we're going to use these Abraham Lincoln heads. One is PLA. The other is polycast. Both of them printed pretty well, so we'll get them prepped, cast them, and see which one's better. I use a soldering iron to get the bottoms cut off. That will allow me to get the investment inside so I can cast these heads hollow. The outside of these heads print super smooth, but the inside can have a lot of jagged spots and stringers. That might catch a small piece of investment that could then get dislodged during the casting process and cause a flaw. It can also cause more turbulence during the casting, which can lower the quality of the finished product. As a solution, I'm going to coat the inside with wax just to try to keep it smoother. Now there's always layer lines to deal with, and I don't want those in the bronze casting. So I'm just going to take some sandpaper and try to sand them away. With all the small angles, it can be a long, tedious process. If I wanted to get this perfect, it would take hours. I'm going to do my best to make it better, but I'm not going to shoot for perfection here. Now the polycast prep is a little different. With this filament, I should be able to take some rubbing alcohol and brush the layer lines away. It kind of melts the surface finish just slightly, dissolving the high points and filling in the low points. So the rubbing alcohol seems to have worked pretty well. It's kind of hard to see because the filament's transparent and I can see the layer lines behind the surface. But as far as I can tell, the surface is nice and smooth and that took a lot less time than sanding the PLA. And I think it turned out a little bit better too. So that might be a perk for the polycast. I added the chaplets to keep the core of the head in place. We'll start with the PLA model and I'll get it set in the investment and ready for burnout. This flask is a little too small for this, but I'm going to improvise and make it work. I had to use some nuts to act as spacers to give it a little more height and a lot of hot glue to fill in the gap. For investment, I'll be using UltraVest from Rio Grande Jewelry Supply. Now if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I sometimes forget kind of important things. Like putting tape around the perforated flask. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh. See, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. I have an eight-minute window <sighs> before the investment is cured. I have to get this taped up, poured, and in my vacuum chamber, and I have no time to spare. Well, that was a little disappointing. Not ideal. The investment was a little too thick for the vacuum to pull, so the bubbles didn't really get drawn out. They just kind of swelled up. That probably means I'm going to have to do a lot of metal chasing. There's probably going to be some bubbles in here, but we should be able to see the quality of the surface finish, regardless of 
bubbles. I'll melt away the wax pouring spout and put the rest in the kiln for burnout. Now with PLA, it leaves behind an ash, so I have to take the flask out and blow it out with compressed air. I want enough air pressure to clear the ash away, but not so much that it's going to damage the mold. That's another reason why I poured wax on the inside of the head, because if there's any small flakes of that investment, this is a point where it would blow off and roll around in there and cause a flaw. I put it back in the kiln to keep it hot for pouring. I've tried casting without blowing out the ash, and this is what it looks like. You can see the surface finish of this baby Yoda is like pockmarked. It's not smooth, it's rough and uneven, and that's because there was a little bit of ash or residue left behind. But blowing it out with compressed air has solved that problem for the most part. But let's get the furnace lit now. Finally, I'll be pouring these in bronze, and as usual, I'll be using my vacuum casting setup. So it's looking pretty good, but just like I feared, there's a few bubbles. I'll get it cleaned up a little better and we'll take a closer look. So the surface finish turned out great. Doesn't have that pock marks, as, there's no sign of ash. There are some very unfortunate bubbles. There's one right in the eye. Bubbles in the eyes always suck, but that has nothing to do with the PLA. There's still a few layer lines visible, but overall, really good. Let's go try the polycast now. It's the exact same process for the polycast. Except this time I'm going to try to use that hot glue o-ring I made. I'll still have to glue it down of course. Now with the polycast I shouldn't need to blow it out at all. There shouldn't be any ash or residue left over. It should burn out just like wax. So I'm going to put it right through the standard wax burn out process. You can see it burning out in there all right. I'll cut the sprues off and finish the metal chasing. So both models are turning out really well. You can already see a few differences, but before I tell you what they are, I'll get them completely finished and then we'll compare them side by side. First thing I gotta do, is old Abe has some gunkers in his eyes. You know those little crusties that form in your eye when you're sleeping? I call them gunkers. Sounds like an Australian term. Probably call them something really weird in Australia. I don't know, what do you call them? Anyway, let's clean Abe's eyes. By gunkers, I mean the metal bubbles. I have to very carefully dremel them away and try to reestablish the pattern of the eyeball. I've ruined more than one sculpture trying to do this. And this sculpture has a lot of other bubbles that I need to deal with. 
Not as bad as the eyeball though. Remember when I said pieces of investment can flake off and roll around inside the mold, leaving flaws? I think that's what happened on the hairline. There's all these little holes on the top of the head. I'm trying to drummle them away, but some of them are going to be a little too deep to deal with. There's even some on the shoulder. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's some kind of inclusion that came in with the metal. I don't think it has anything to do with the polycast or PLA itself. I'll give each one a quick patina. Get them buffed up. And then we're ready for the comparison. So both heads are done. Which one is the winner? There are some clear differences. First one being with the layer lines. With the PLA model, the layer lines are more pronounced because with the polycast model, I could blend it in a little bit better. But that also blended away some of the detail. So if you look at the lines along the collar, you can see that the PLA model is a little bit sharper. If you look at the eyes, the PLA model has a little bit more detail. Now it's not that the polycast has to be that way, but if you're gonna smooth everything out with alcohol, it's gonna brush away some of the detail as well. However, in things like the hair or the beard, that's gonna be impossible to sand. So if you wanna eliminate the layer lines in something like that, polycast is gonna be your best option. I think. And see if you look at the back of the head, there's a few more layer lines in the hair on the PLA model because I couldn't smooth it away the same way I could with the polycast model. The polycast model did have some more inclusions around the top of the head and the shoulder, but that's not the fault of polycast. Inclusions happen. That's my fault. I will say the polycast did burn away very cleanly, just like lost wax casting. I didn't need to blow it out. And if it was a casting that wasn't as easy to blow out as this one, it might be a big benefit. For example, I plan on doing a bronze Natiri. All the hair and the arms and the fingers, that's gonna be harder to blow out. Ash might get stuck somewhere and cause a flaw. With polycast, that might not be an issue. So I can see where it does have its benefit. However, based on this experiment, I don't see that polycast as a necessity by any means. Lost PLA casting seems to work just fine. With a little more time and care and sanding, or even a slight coating of wax, I could eliminate the layer lines completely. So what's my opinion? I think it depends on the project. I'll continue to use both. I'll post an affiliate link for the PLA and the polycast that I used, so you can buy some if you want. I'm also going to auction off both of these heads on eBay, so look for the link below. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.